Well, okay, first of all, um, I tried to buy the book, um, and 20th Century Fox bought it. And I remember thinking, well, that's that. And um, Josh Donnan, who became my agent, who was the guy who was trying to buy the book with me, said, you should go and you should talk with Laura Ziskin, because Laura Ziskin is not Fox. It's not the Fox that you had to deal with on Alien. I said, here's the two ways you can go. You can do the $3 million version of this movie and make it on videotape and, and make your seditious little sharp stick in somebody's eye who may see it someday in some little tiny theater or maybe or may go straight to DVD. Or the real act of sedition here is the $50 million version, give or take. And to put movie stars in it and get people to go and, and, and talk about you know this anti-consumerist rantings of a, of a schizophrenic madman. So we, w we went off and we came back, we had a, a schedule, we had a budget, we had a cast, we had storyboards, and we had a script. And we said, here it is. And it was a, we took it out to dinner. We put this giant thing on the table and we said, here it is, it's 62.5 million dollars. It's Brad Pitt, it's Edward Norton, and um, you have three days, let us know. <laughs> I remember when we first aired it at the Venice Film Festival. We sat next to the uh, to the guy who was head of the festival. I don't I don't know exactly what his title is, and it started out. <laughs> it started. It was Edward and I, and uh, the movie starts out and it's dead silent. And I don't know if this is about translation or or they're really just not not into the to the film. And I see the the festival ahead. I see him start to go, you know, with bits that I think are really funny. And Edward and I are laughing out loud. We're the, we're the only we're like the obnoxious Americans laughing at our own movie. And there's a particularly offensive joke from the Marla character. <laughs> and at that point, he just got up and left. But it didn't know who the makeup of this audience was going to be. I thought it was, you know, these were going to be rabid cinephiles. And um, I think the median age of the audience was 73. It was dead silent. And we, we proceeded to howl even harder in it. We had a great experience. We thought it was, we were on to something. And I was sitting there and these women came out and there was four or five of them. It was, you know, a good enough of a portion of a row. And they all kind of vaguely looked like Anne Bancroft in The Graduate. And they were all in their 60s. And this woman looked up and she saw me there and she recognized from the, you have to do this stand up and wave at the beginning of the, of the screening. And she looked at me and she just went. And I remember, <laughs> you know, it always reminds me of Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know, where Tim Curry said, where Susan Sarandon says his, his muscles are too big, and he says, we didn't make it for you. It's actually most difficult for me to explain Fincher because we're such good friends. We have such a laugh, and um, he's, you know, he's got a healthy sense of irreverence that I appreciate. He um, suffers no fools, and he's an incredibly, incredibly bright man. I would call him a maverick, certainly. This conversation. This conversation is over. Is over.